Minister, it, it's really hard to think of anything as necessary to life as water. And next to food and heat is absolutely, truly essential. And when the government, past government, attempted to bring in water charges, we were constantly told by various business interests that water would be the new oil in the coming years as the environment globally became threatened by climate and other crises. And indeed, when Fianna Fáil Labour and Fianna Gael tried to ram through the water charges, uh, they were quick to tell us how precious a resource water is and that was their main justification in pushing water charges on ordinary people. So while the name of this bill might seem a bit abstract, it could hardly deal with anything more fundamental and more basic to life. Like a lot of bills that come before us, the rationale is good, the need for some regulation of water taken from our rivers and lakes and so on is very self-evident, and we know that the national picture in terms of water quality is grim, that EPA reports on our rivers and lakes are regularly desperate warnings about the state of our waters and the biodiversity that they support, and we know that nitrogen is choking our coasts and our rivers. So yes, any bill which seeks to regulate and protect our water systems is welcome. But here again I'm struck by a paradox when it comes to how the state regulates any and every sphere. We are told this bill will give effect to several EU directives essentially we have to legislate. But as we often do, we are choosing with this bill the path of least resistance, the minimal regulation, the bare essential required to get us over the Brussels line. And when you look at this bill and read over the very useful Shannon debates that were held, a few questions jump out and would be good if the minister would clarify and try to clarify in answering the questions. First of all, as was highlighted in the Shannon debate, the thresholds for registration are 25 cubic metres and for licensing, 2,000 cubic metres. I'm at a loss to understand why anything below such large volumes of water are exempt from regulation. It's at odds with the EU, with the UK, even with the north of this country. This threshold was estimated to be the same as enough water that supplies 42 households. The Shannon debate heard that of the 21 water bottling plants in the country, none would pass this threshold. How does that make any sense, Minister? Firstly, has, have you resolved the conflict between this bill and the advice of the OPLA in relation to the thresholds? And I note that this question has been asked uh, of you multiple times on the volume of water that can be taken before there is a need to hold a licence or even to be registered. The OPLA suggested that it was inconsistent with the EU directive and that the EPA would find it impossible to determine if there was any determination in the status of water bodies if the threshold was below 25 cubic metres. And secondly, why are we enforcing different standards between existing licence holders or extractors and new licence holders? And why do we have such large categories of exemptions from the legislation? We know that the likes of Diageo and Glanbia and others take massive quantities of water from our bodies, our water bodies, but I'm unclear if this legislation essentially gives them a free pass again, and that needs to be clarified. If it does, you might explain the logic behind regulating to protect our water bodies, but ignoring vast sections of industries that are placing pressure and demand on them. I want to talk now about data centres, and again, I want to ask the Minister if this bill will regulate the use by data centres of our water because we know that they do require massive amount of water as well as energy. And while we wait to see if the lights will go out this winter because of our insane policy of supporting the unbridled proliferation of data centre building, the other side of that coin is the massive use of water at these centres. Despite the greenwashing associated with them, they are a massive draw on our water supplies and our water bodies, and we seem to be largely ignorant about how much and what uh, water is being used. The average data centre uses, at the lower estimate, about half a million litres of water per day, and that's according to figures gathered by the Sunday Business Post. The figure has also in it the potential of that to rise to five million litres of water to to, uh, per day. But these other figures, Facebook's data centre in County Mead, used 395 million litres of water in 2019. And that site is currently significantly expanding. 
One data centre in Dublin filed planning applications that suggested it could use up to 4.5 million litres of water a day. Of Amazon's large network of data centres in Dublin, permission sought for a centre in Dublin 17 stated that it could use 296,000 litres of water a day. A facility on the Belgard Road could use approximately 320,000 litres of water a day and one in Blanchardstown could use 330 approximately 1,000 litres of water a day, and again, according to the Sunday Business Post. And yet, when I asked Irish Water about data centres, their replies suggest that they don't know, and that they don't think it's that important to monitor the volume and the quantity of water used. Officially, they reported to me when asked, and I quote, while the overall percentage consumption of water may be low, at 0.13%, 810 millions of litres for 24 data centres, i.e. an average of 33.75 millions of litres each a day. That may baffle people, but there are very obvious problems with the answer. The figures are given to us for 24 data centres, but we know there are 70 plus data centres in this state. They've given no convincing reason or rationale what happened to the other 50 or so. And worse, they don't seem to have an issue with the proliferation or even a guess at what might happen when the next dozen or so hyperscale data centres are built and come on stream. This is extraordinary and stands in stark conflict with the attitude to domestic and household use by ordinary people. What's even more alarming is the full answer from Irish Water, and I quote, data centres are one type of non-domestic customer and we don't analyse them uniquely in planning for future demand, as they would represent a very small percentage of current and future non-domestic use. Data centres mainly use water only for staff facilities and cleaning. Some data centres do use water for cooling purposes, but based on the Irish climate, that would be for a short number of days per year. Perhaps, Minister, someone should tell Irish Water about climate change and the impact of global warming in this country. It seems our state bodies responsible for this and those responsible for regulating have little interest in knowing how much and where our waters are used by industry. And again, we're forced to regulate. We still seem keen to go ahead with light touch or no touch regulation. And I'm afraid, Minister, that this bill is another example of that no-touch or light-touch regulation, but I would appreciate you attempting to answer the questions that were posed here.